If you're still waiting for Fubo to hit that $8 price target per share, I'm sure Rich Greenfield would love some new supporters to sell his pipe dream to. For everyone else, there's reality. And the reality is that Fubo will not be hitting $8 per share, and Lightshed analyst Rich Greenfield will be coming up with half-ass explanations or excuses as to why he was wrong, just as he's doing right now with his uh, Disney prediction. If you've been following all of the important trends that could possibly affect Fubo's share price, you've probably noticed that these trends are all in favor of Fubo. And when I say this, I'm also considering the trend of Rich Greenfield's Twitter account, which was once active, very active, with negative Fubo tweets being posted not just daily, but he posted those negative tweets multiple times every single day. But now I'm noticing a new trend on his account, and this new trend on his account seems to be to post less and less about Fubo until everyone forgets about his ridiculous, hold on, I didn't qu put quite enough emphasis on that, ridiculous price target. But my intent today is not to point out that Rich Greenfield was wrong, nor is it to call him out for trying to build his weak reputation by taking advantage of the shareholder lockup expiration where he knew the share price would go down and wanted to make himself look like he knew what he was talking about. When in all reality, he simply took advantage of an obvious call out where statistically the chances of him being incorrect were very slim. But, like I said, my intent is not to call him out, even if my intro indirectly does so for me, because in this video, I'll be giving you the latest Fubo updates, as well as correcting, I mean, addressing some misconceptions about Fubo stock that you may have heard on other YouTube channels. And we're gonna be starting right now. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If you're new here and you want to learn how to use stocks and options to make your portfolio go parabolic, make sure you start now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss an upload. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to yet another Fubo video. This is the official Fubo channel. I've told you that before and I'm telling you that again now because sometimes we all just need a reminder. Now, I know that some of you may be a little nervous about holding your Fubo shares, so I'm here to make you feel a lot better, not just a little, because I'm holding my Fubo shares. I'm going to continue buying into Fubo and I hope that everyone here sticks around long enough to see why that's going to be very beneficial for you to do in the future. If you stick with me, if you stick with this channel, you're going to be very happy. So without any further ado, let's get this party started. I want to get right into it, ladies and gentlemen, but before I do, I would like to ask you to please consider giving this video an early thumbs up as it greatly, greatly, and I can't stress that enough, helps to support this channel. I put a lot of time and effort into each video so that we could all make money from the market together. And if you're not part of the family yet, I want you to join my family. We're growing fast, both as a community and financially by the day. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tap that bell so you have access to videos as soon as they come out. And getting right into it, ladies and gentlemen, I want to start off by showing you some data that I picked up through ARK Invest. Now, this data will show you two different things. Number one, how much the streaming industry is really worth, or at least how much we can expect it to grow, and how much money will be available to this industry in terms of both advertising and subscribers in the next five years. And number two, I believe ARC's research will show exactly how important sports is to this industry. Keep in mind, we're not even discussing the wagering aspect of this business, which is a whole nother story. So let's talk about the proliferation of on-demand viewing services that has changed viewers' perceptions of linear TV. So paying for a thousand plus channels and 90% plus of them never even watched now seems pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, streaming services are providing content at a 70% discount to cable providers and are also able to match subscribers with specific content 
thanks to AI recommendation algos. And keep that in mind because we're going to be talking about how the technology with Fubo is a lot better than other platform AIs. Now, 52% of cord cutters say that they don't miss anything about their old cable or satellite TV. 23% say that if they did miss anything, it was typically live events. 22% say they miss local and national news. And 19% say they miss sports. In case you missed this in some of my other videos, Fubo is known for their sports packages, but they're also known for having one of the best news platforms out there. One of the top reasons to consider Fubo TV is its sports streaming lineup. The standard plan offers national and local sports programming from broadcast affiliates such as ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. Sports channels such as BTN, CBS Sports Network, FS1, FS2, Fubo Sports Network, NBA TV, NBC Sports Network, NFL Network, and the Golf Channel, and international sports channels such as BEIN Sports, GOL TV, and TUDN. A recent deal with Disney adds some key sports channels to the lineup, including ESPN, ESPN2, SEC Network, and ACC Network. More expensive plans include ESPN News and ESPNU. Two, Fubo TV's lack of ESPN channels was previously a glaring issue, but now you can watch all of that channel's live sports, including Monday Night Football and flagship sports shows on that service. There are basically only two reasons why live TV even exists anymore, and that's sports and news. So obviously Fubo has got the sports side covered, and they're also surprisingly strong on the news side with more news channels than any of their competitors. They've got Fox News, Fox Business, CNN, MSNBC, CNBC, HLN, Cheddar, and many more. But now let's go back to revisit some of the data that came from ARK Invest. So according to ARK Invest research, 83 million American households still use linear TV as their primary method of visual entertainment. That's two-thirds of American households. So how does that translate into how much money will be pouring into this new streaming industry once these cords have been cut? Well, subscription revenue was roughly $89 billion per year, and advertising has been around $70 billion per year. At an enterprise value to subscription sales, multiple of 3.44, and enterprise value to advertising sales multiple of 1.94, Linear TV subscription market cap is around $306 billion, and its advertising market cap is $135.8 billion. So what does this mean? It means that $442 billion in market capitalization seems ripe for disruption. Disruptive innovation typically slowly until it hits a tipping point. So in 2011, the number of U.S. linear TV households has been declining at an annual rate of 2.1%, a rate that ARK Invest believes will accelerate to 15% at an annual rate during the next five years. So cumulatively, the number of U.S. linear TV households could drop 48% from 86 million to roughly 44 million, which is a level last seen more than 30 years ago in the late 1980s. But what is accelerating, or what did accelerate, this cord cutting recently? Well, the answer is very simple. And the major sports drought that we just experienced as a result of the, uh, well, the Rony virus. This shift is reminiscent of the demise of print media during the global financial crisis in 2008 through 2009. Print media faces double-digit declines annually. So as cord cutting accelerates, Fubo will see its fair share of that market. Except, if you've watched my previous videos, you probably remember that the trend has been very favorable towards Fubo. In fact, it has shown that Fubo is growing much faster than its competition and quickly taking market share away from the big boys like YouTube TV. So next on our agenda for today 
is to discuss a recent attack on Fubo TV that took place on January the 4th. So most of you are already aware or pretty much know to ignore any type of news related to investigations or lawsuits that are coming from any type of law firms. These are bogus and don't amount to anything. It's more or less an advertisement from the law firm that's trying to see how many people they can get together for a class action lawsuit. In which case, the law firm would make a lot of money, but not each individual that actually came forward. So this is very insignificant and I normally wouldn't even give any attention to this, but there's something interesting about this specific scenario. What interests me the most about this is why this law firm is claiming to try to come after Fubo. So check it out. On January 4th, 2021, The Motley Fool published an article entitled, There's a Big Problem with Fubo TV Stock. The article characterized the company as wildly unprofitable and trying to put lipstick on a pig with a creative metric. Specifically, the article asserted that the company's adjusted contribution margin, which the company presented in its financial reporting as a purportedly positive profitability metric, was in fact a meaningless number, a function of how quickly the company is gaining subscribers, not a representation of profitability. The article concluded that the fact that the company reports such a misleading metric is a huge red flag. On this news, Fubo TV stock price fell $3.76 per share, or 13.43%, to close at $24.24 per share on January 4th, 2021. So why do I find this so interesting? Well, for starters, The Motley Fool's paid subscription service recommended Fubo and called it out as a buy under their rule breaker category, meaning break all your rules when it comes to stocks and buy Fubo right now. And a very quick Google search will reveal dozens of bullish articles from The Motley Fool about Fubo. So I guess the author of that article didn't get the memo. But this is just another example that goes to show you that you should stick with your own research and do not trust these clowns that are trying to spoon feed you information on the internet. With the exception of, uh, you know, just one guy on YouTube and uh, that would be me. Alright, so now it's time to clear up some of these misconceptions about Fubo that you've probably heard on other YouTube channels. We're going to start by talking about sports betting and one channel that says that there are much bigger players that can afford to spend a lot more money on advertising than Fubo can, so how will Fubo keep up? And this statement does not compare Fubo to other streaming competitors, but specifically is referring to wagering platforms. So my response to this would be, number one, think outside of the box. We are in the infancy stages of sports betting in the first place, so lots of new competitors will pop up, and there's room for dozens of these players. Number two, you have to look at the reason that Fubo is getting into this space in the first place. And that is that they have access to a closely related audience. And their audience is growing at an impressive rate. It won't take much effort to start converting this audience and capitalizing on the services that they're offering. And number three, other players in the sports betting industry are dishing out large amounts of money to advertise not only on Fubo, but on other related streaming platforms. So you have to ask yourself, why? Why would they continue to do so if it didn't make sense for them to do so? For example, FanDuel has been partnered with Fubo TV for quite some time. I believe this relationship began in 2019. We know that they are paying a lot of money for this advertising, which brings me to another point. We see that Fubo's advertising revenue is significantly higher than advertising revenue seen on traditional streaming platforms, but no one has ever stopped to think about why. Why is Fubo's advertising revenue growing at such a significantly higher rate than other streaming platforms? 
This could also be because most people aren't aware of these relationships between Fubo and sports betting platforms. In fact, the only other YouTube channel that I could find that even mentions anything remotely close to this was a channel that is under the impression that Fubo and FanDuel agreed to a partnership that would allow Fubo to offer sports betting on its platform. The same channel criticizes Fubo by stating that they're, they've been trying to offer sports betting on their platform since 2019 through a partnership with FanDuel, but it did not happen. The YouTuber goes on to use this as a justification as to why Fubo will fail to bring sports betting to their platform in the future. So here's the scoop. On May 23rd, 2019, there was a deal to enhance the viewing experience of Fubo customers with wagering. So a deal to provide exclusive sports gambling content, including special shows, on-screen data, and more. As part of the deal, FanDuel's first with a third-party OTT service they become Fubo TV's exclusive sportsbook, online casino, horse racing, and a daily fantasy partner, as well as the only gambling advertiser on Fubo TV. And in return, Fubo TV is adding FanDuel owned horse racing TV network TVG to their base lineup and TVGL to their $8.99 sports plans package. Along with the... Sp I've also heard some criticism when it comes to Balto, which is the company that Fubo acquired that's going to allow them to do sports betting. It's an actual sports betting platform. Now, the criticism that I'm hearing is that this was a very small company. It didn't employ very many people, things of that nature. So what I have to say about that is this. First of all, what you guys are forgetting or what these others are forgetting is that Fubo is a tech company first. I've said this before on my previous videos. They're a tech company first and then everything else after. So them being a tech company, they're able to offer disruptive innovation on their platform that other streaming services or similar companies aren't able to do. With the sports betting side of things, they purchased this sports betting platform to enhance it and work on it. Rather than having to start from scratch and building a platform from scratch, they're able to fast track what they're trying to offer, which is sports betting on their streaming platform by using the talent that they have at their company to enhance this platform that already existed and add on to it to build the perfect platform that works for them and that will ultimately work for their user base. While I have you here, I wanted to quickly tell you about the brand new First Trade app, available for mobile or PC. The platform will give you access to powerful and easy to use tools and allows you to trade with less restrictions, zero commissions, zero fees, and you can use the first link in the description below to download a free stock today without having to deposit any money. This will greatly help out the channel and is always appreciated. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Congrats, ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of the video. If you like what you watched, make sure you subscribe because I put out videos just like this one every single day. And please do me a favor and smash that like button if I helped you in any way because it really goes a long way in helping the channel out and keeps me motivated to make videos every single day. Now, there's a lot of work involved, a lot of research, and a lot of time and effort into editing and putting these out daily for you guys. You can subscribe from your screen right now. Or if you want to watch one of my other videos, I'm sure YouTube has some good content picked out for you on the left-hand side of your screen now. Thanks for sticking it out with me till the end, and I will see you guys in the next video.